Late in 1985, U.S. News and World Report published the results of a survey of over 800 university and college presidents ranking the nation's institutions of higher learning. On page 47 of that issue, in the ranking of liberal arts colleges, Pomona College was found to rank well within the top 10 of the nation's most exclusive institutions. In the semester before this report came out, a group of Pomona students collaboratively deliberated over what they considered special about Pomona. The class, offered in the English department, is called the Arts of Persuasion. I'm Brian Stonehill, the instructor. The 25 students spent eight weeks studying Aristotle's rhetoric and other classic texts of persuasion, and then voted to apply their knowledge to video technology by collaboratively writing and producing the half-hour student's eye view of Pomona College that you are about to share. They persuaded David Goodman, my colleague in the Department of Music, to compose original music for their production, and decided to begin with excerpts from a 1960 promotional film about the Claremont Colleges, narrated by Ronald Reagan. With support from the English department, the dean of the college, and the Alumni Association, we're pleased to present Pomona College, A Day in Two Lives. Look upon this picture. Don't ask me and now on this. The struggle for control of the minds of men continues. This is fine. But which type of control? This? Or the control which allows the mind to open the pathways to wisdom. In Claremont, California, a group of colleges has been brought into being under a new concept in education that is unique and exciting in this struggle for men's minds. development began with Pomona College. Founded in 1887 in the New England tradition, its first building was an abandoned hotel. But then as now, California was growing rapidly. Pomona soon expanded its facilities to accommodate more students. Its growing number of friends provided this privately endowed college with the funds to maintain its growth. The academic importance of Pomona was quickly gaining national attention. Teddy Roosevelt spoke there in 1902. By 1915, it became necessary to restrict enrollment in the interest of academic quality. In 1923, three out of every four applicants were turned away. Classrooms were filled to capacity. The college had to expand or drastically limit its enrollment. Dr. James Blaisdell, then president of Pomona, saw in this problem an exciting promise for the future. He said, my own very deep hope is that we might have a group of institutions divided into small colleges, somewhat on the Oxford type. In this way, I should hope to preserve the inestimable personal values of the small college while securing the facilities of the great university. This is Pomona College. It's a liberal arts institution with emphasis on the social sciences, natural sciences, and humanities, and has a strong athletic program. It is coeducational. It's the oldest and largest of the colleges. Enrollment about 1,000. A distinguished faculty of 111. Pomona College is a seasoned, well-rounded institution. Its graduates have, through the years, attained national distinction in both scholarship and leadership. These men and women have been enriched and benefited from the other colleges in the group plan, which has also helped Pomona preserve its traditional character. The people here seem to be motivated by the dynamism of Dr. James Blaisdell, who said of the group plan, I believe we are at the beginning of a new era of educational effectiveness.
emotional film that Ronald Reagan narrated in 1960 puts 1985 Pomona student Ken Miller to sleep. But things have changed since President Reagan visited Claremont 25 years ago. Pomona College now boasts an enrollment of 1325 and a distinguished faculty of 178. What you're about to witness is the Pomona College of today.